what is going on guys hope you're doing awesome in this quick video i will show you how to use float 16 when training networks um, and so if you're using float 16 it will reduce your vram by approximately 50 percent and also on newer gpus it will just train a lot faster so it's definitely something you want to use let's uh, let's take a look at exactly how we how we use it All right, so to make this video a little bit quicker, uh, we're gonna go to my GitHub page and we're just gonna take one of the code from a previous tutorial. So let's pick this uh, convolutional neural network and we're just gonna copy all the code for that one. All right, and let's paste that in. And then uh, what I wanna do is uh, make the network just a little bit larger. So maybe we'll change the out channels to, I don't know, 420 and let's do out channels a thousand or something like that all right so it's just a little bit bigger and let's now change match size maybe 128 and let's see if we can run this all right so the limit seems to be at a, at a batch size of 590 so if we change the batch size to 600 uh, there's a crash but if we set it to 590 it's okay so what we'll try is if we can uh, set up the float 16 training and see how much of a larger batch size uh, we can now use. So what we'll do is we'll do scalar is torch.cuda.amp.gradscaler. And this is something that you set up uh, before training, so outside of the training loop. Then what you'll do in the forward part of the, of the, comp of the network, you'll do with torch.cuda.amp.autocast. Uh, and you'll just perform uh, the computations, the forward and the loss, uh, inside of inside of that autocast. And then for the backward step, it's going to be pretty. It's going to be the same for the optimizer zero grad, but for the loss dot backward, we'll first do scalar dot scale of loss, and then we'll do um, instead of optimizer dot step, we'll do scalar dot step of of optimizer. And the last thing is we'll do scalar.update. All right, so it's pretty close, right, to how it normally looks like. But so now let's see, first of all, if you can run with a batch size of 590. And then let's try to see sort of how much larger we can have. So maybe we can try 800. So uh, when we used float32, uh, we, we could use, so float uh, fp32, we could use a batch size of 590. For float 16, uh, we can use a batch size of 1,000. So that's about a 70% larger batch size. And I haven't checked. We can also perhaps make this a little bit larger. But anyways, um, as you can see, there's a big difference, and there should be. And you should use float 16 pretty much as default when training uh, networks. All right, so I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.